And we still have one more to go. But if I had to pick one neighborhood that I think was the most undervalued, if you're looking for the most equity, I think a single family home out here is where you're going to do the best. Hey everyone, Eric the Realtor here, and today I'm going to break down San Francisco's most undervalued neighborhoods. Now these are already well-established neighborhoods. I'm not going to go over up-and-coming neighborhoods. That's for a whole other video another time. These are neighborhoods that have seen a price drop over the last couple of years and are probably going to be the first neighborhoods to shoot right back up when interest rates go down. So if your plan is to buy low and refinance in a couple of years and really capitalize on all that equity, you are definitely going to want to check out these neighborhoods. I'm going to show five different neighborhoods and I'm going to break them down on five categories. The first one, I'm going to show one bedroom condos under $750,000 two bedroom condos under a million and three bedroom condos under 1.5 million. We're also gonna look at three bedroom single family homes under 1.5 million and four bedroom single family homes under 2 million. Okay, here's the parameters. They're all gonna have at least one car garage parking. They will all have a minimum of two bathrooms except our first one, which is a one bedroom. That'll be a one one. And these are not gonna be fixer uppers. These are fully renovated, ready to go, move in ready homes. Now, before we jump in, I'm gonna share a little hack that I tell all of my clients that are home buying, whether you're using Redfin or Zillow, whatever site you like to use, don't ever look at homes listed for sale when you're doing this introductory search, when you're just kind of doing a 30,000 foot search, you're gonna to wanna to look at sold data. You're gonna to wanna to look at sold homes because some homes sell for 20, 30% over list, some homes sell for five, 10% below list. And some of those homes have been listed for many, many months, even a year or longer. So those list prices are not gonna help you calibrate and better understand the market. So I'm gonna use the MLS because I get a lot better search results. There's just a lot more search power. I can see everything. You know, I don't wanna say anything bad about Redfin's or Zillow's, but they hide a lot of information. They don't show you everything. I don't know why, I don't know if the, at the MLS is the one that's not giving it to them or vice versa. Um, you know, TICs are listed as condos on Zillow, for example. There's just a lot of little weird nuances. So um, I'm gonna use the MLS, but before we jump in and do that, I'm gonna show you on Zillow what I think you should do. Okay, so here we are on Zillow. I'm just gonna type in San Francisco. And then most of the most of the time, folks are just gonna jump in right here and they're gonna start looking around, playing with the price point. But what I want you to do is change this to sold. And let's say that you wanna look for homes that are between 750 and a million. Pick your beds and your baths. Pick the home types. I wanna look at single family homes. Um, but most importantly, you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way down and do sold in the last 12 months, six months, whatever you wanna do. Probably do six months to really get a feel for how the market's working right now. Now you can zoom in and really take a look and see what happened in your price range in your search area. Or you can just click out of the city here completely and just type in your neighborhood. And here you go. So here's all the single family homes in the mission that sold over the last six months under a million dollars that have a minimum of two beds and two baths. Okay, so the first neighborhood we're gonna look at is at the $750,000 max price point for a one bedroom condo. We're looking at past sales just over the last six months. And so we've got one dog patch, cow hollow intermission. Now, only one of these per neighborhood are popping up. So we're gonna ignore those. Again, we're going high level. There are gonna be one-offs. It could just be a fixer upper, or it could be just something weird about it. But uh, we're looking for a good chunk like here in Mission Bay. Knob Hill, there's a couple, North Beach, Nopa. North Waterfront, Outer Richmond, Petro Hill. So those are all maybe two one-offs, so don't want to focus on those. There's a ton in South Beach and Soma. Not going to go get into the downtown area, the Soma area too much, because I don't know if those neighborhoods have hit the actual bottom yet. It may happen later this year or next year, um, but I don't consider those undervalued. I think they're appropriately valued. The second one here, Twin Peaks, we'll go back and look at that one. Van S Civic Center near the Tenderloin. I do not think that that area is overvalued. I think there's still maybe a little bit more downward direction on home prices there. Western Edition, there's just one. And then Yerba One is down, down part of the, uh, the Soma downtown area. So what we're left with is Mission Bay and Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, we're going to call an honorable mention. It's one of my absolute favorite neighborhoods. I love it up there. I made an entire... 10 minute long neighborhood review video that you guys should check out. It's it's a phenomenal neighborhood, um, but we are gonna go with Mission Bay. So right here is Mission Bay. There's a lot of stuff that's still being developed there, but it is pretty much fully developed. It's by no means up and coming. If you're looking to, if you're looking for the next Mission Bay, the next up and coming neighborhood, you probably wanna go a little bit farther south here into Dogpatch. The Chase Center is here, the Warriors are here, UCSF is here. 
and there is just a ton of gorgeous condos out all around here. And the San Francisco Giants just play north of the channel in China Basin. I also made a neighborhood review video about Mission Bay if you wanna learn a lot more about it. So if you're looking for a one bedroom condo, 750 max point, Mission Bay is definitely one of the neighborhoods that you need to target and you need to check out. And I'm gonna use the same format for all the other neighborhoods. I don't care about one-offs. We're looking at six months worth of data. So the next one I'm gonna do is two bedroom condos under a million. And we're gonna look and we're gonna see a couple of onesie, twosie, one-offs uh, in certain neighborhoods and in higher up neighborhoods. But we're not gonna use those. Those could be fixer uppers, it could be outliers. Again, we're looking at big picture. I want you to know where a good amount of sales are happening in certain neighborhoods that I think are undervalued neighborhoods. Okay, so here are the two bed condos under a million. And now we've increased the bathroom size to two. So the rest of the search parameters for the rest of the video, we're gonna do uh, two bathrooms. So we got a couple in Dog Patch, only a couple in Diamond Heights, a couple downtown, one in Hayes Valley, Intermission is a couple, Mission Bay there is a few. Knob Hill, we got a lot. So we're gonna uh, come back and look at that. Nopa, Sunset, Pack Heights has a couple. There's a lot in Parkside, probably somewhere where you would wanna look if you're looking for a single family home. I'm not sure if that's where you wanna be if you're gonna buy a condo. Potrero Hill, there's a lot. We'll come back and take a look at that. And we already talked about Soma. I don't know if that's the most undervalued neighborhood, so I'm gonna skip that one. A couple in Twin Peaks and then a couple down Civic Center Van Ness near the Tenderloin. So we're gonna skip those. So that leaves us with Potrero Hill, a phenomenal neighborhood, very sunny neighborhood. It's got 101 and 280 on each side of the neighborhood. So there's great transportation. There's plenty of freeway access. And, that, and I'm seeing a ton of great deals right now go in Potrero Hill. Honorable mention is Knob Hill. I love Knob Hill. I used to live in Pacific Heights and love going, hanging out on Polk Street. So Knob Hill, I'm gonna make an honorable mention though, because almost all of these are on busy streets, Broadway, 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 California, California. So I don't necessarily love the idea of being on busy streets. Now, if you want to get into a premium neighborhood for a good price, then that is that is a consolation you're gonna to have to make. And that's something you have to look into is going onto a, a busier street. But um, Knob Hill, it looks like it's gonna be pretty hard to get in there a two bedroom for, for under a million dollars unless you're willing to make that concession. So honorable mention for Knob Hill. And here's Potrero Hill. It's a little bit farther south than folks may wanna live but it is a really great neighborhood. It's just east of the Mission District. Mission Bay is north of it. Very nice, warm weather. It's not Mission District hot. It's not Mission Bay hot, but it is very warm. Not a whole lot of cloud cover. The clouds will kind of come in and you will get some fog. Carl will show up in the late afternoons, early evenings. Um, but overall, weather is really good and there is a lot of deals right now that I'm seeing in Prochero Hill. But if you're looking for a two bed, two bath condo under a million dollars, definitely want to go look around in Petro Hill. Now we're gonna look at three bedroom, two bath condos, three bedroom condos for under 1.5 million. Okay, so there's been 18 sales in the city this year that have been three bed condos under 1.5 million. Let's take a look at the neighborhoods. There's three in the Richmond or the Central Richmond, one in the Mission, a couple in Lone Mountain, Lower Pack Heights, there's a few also. So we will uh, come back and look at Central Richmond and we're gonna come back and look at Lower Pack Heights. Mission Dolores just one, only a couple in Pack Heights, Russian Hill, South Beach we talked about, and Van Ness we talked about. I'm gonna give Lower Pack Heights an honorable mention. There's there's three here, that's a good amount. So you know it's not just one one-off or a fixer-upper. There is a significant amount of inventory that has sold there, but Bush, Sutter, Laguna, these are near the busier streets. It's right between Pine and Geary. It's not a bad area. You're not near the Tenderloin, you're not near the Civic Center, but I'm just gonna give it an honorable mention because I don't see anyone tucked in the, the quiet blocks of the lower pack heights. So we are gonna go with the central Richmond. Let's check it out. So most people call it the Richmond, but there's actually three sections. There's inner Richmond, central Richmond, and outer Richmond. And if you've never been out here, you definitely have to check it out. You're right on top of Golden Gate Park. Sea Cliff, one of the most expensive neighborhoods is just north of you. And you're right next to Ocean Beach. Now, one thing about the central Richmond though is people either love it or they hate it. If you have not spent any time up here, it feels like its own city. If San Francisco was its own state, then the Richmond would be its own city. It is different than the sunset though. So if you have not spent any time in the Richmond, but you have spent time in the sunset, I would still recommend you go up here and check it out. You feel very secluded, very tucked away, and you are really tucked in with Presidio Park and Golden Gate Park and the ocean, but it's a love-hate relationship. People either love it or they hate it. It's gonna be really cloudy there all the time. It's gonna be a little bit colder. 
Transportation is good up there, but you don't have a lot of freeway access and commute time to downtown is gonna be tough if you're driving. But that's all what makes this neighborhood so desirable is there's not a lot of tourism out there. There's not even Bay Area tourism or California folks that are coming out there. It's very local, it's very chill. On that same note, I made another video where I did a really quick overview on neighborhoods. And so there are a couple other really great local only type neighborhoods in the city. If you want to stay away from the marina and the Embarcadero, where you're going to see a lot more tourism, you know, Columbus Avenue, you want to stay away from that stuff. Check out that other video. It's right here. It's uh, which San Francisco neighborhood should you move to? And I point out some good local corridors where there's a lot going on, but there's not any kind of touristy action at all. Fillmore Street, Polk Street are two of my favorites if you don't want to be up here with all the, the big weekend crowds, the out-of-towners, you know, Haight-Ashbury, Alamo Square, Nopa, phenomenal neighborhoods, but it gets really packed and it gets really busy with a bunch of tourism. Now we're gonna look at single family homes. We're gonna look at $1.5 million, three bedroom single family homes. Then we're gonna finish up with single family homes, four bedrooms that are under $2 million. So let's first look at the three bedroom single family homes that are under 1.5. We've got 45 total single family homes that have sold for under $1.5 million for three bedrooms. Bernal Heights has four, that's pretty good. Central Sunset, three of them. Rona Heights has one, Crocker Amazon's got a couple, Excelsior, Forest Hill, great neighborhood, but just one. Glen Park has a couple, Golden Gate Heights, Ingleside's only a couple, Merced Heights, Midtown Terrace got a couple, Mira Loma Park, Mission Terrace has only a couple, Outer Mission. Outer Parkside's got a lot. Here's a couple, Outer Sunset, Outer Richmond, and Parkside's got a lot. Portola's got a few. All right, so we're gonna go with Parkside and Outer Parkside, and that's because these neighborhoods were blowing up a couple of years ago. And now these prices are just insane low. Like you would need $2 million to buy a home in Parkside, a fully renovated, ready to go, beautiful home in Parkside. It just was not happening unless you were near the $2 million mark. And my honorable mention is gonna be Bernal Heights. I don't think that neighborhood has really cooled off much. It's still a hot neighborhood. People still wanna be in Bernal. They still wanna be in Glen Park, Noe Valley. Those Southern neighborhoods are still really hot. So let's take a look at Parkside. There's Inner Parkside, Parkside, and Outer Parkside, these neighborhoods down here. And we still have one more to go, but if I had to pick one neighborhood that I think was the most undervalued, if you're looking for the most equity, you're looking to get in and buy a home this year with the interest rates where they're at and the prices, and you're hoping to refinance and get a ton of equity, I think a single family home out here in Parkside is where you're gonna do the best. Okay, we're at our very last search. Now we're gonna look at four bedroom homes, single family homes, four bedrooms under $2 million. There's not a lot of four bedroom single family homes that sold in San Francisco this year for 2 million or less, we only have 13. So we got a couple in Bernal, a couple in the Sunset, Midtown Terrace, Maryland Park, Mount Davidson Manor. These are all phenomenal neighborhoods, but there's only one sale. They could just be one-offs, it could be a fixer-upper. Same with Noe Valley. You're gonna need more than $2 million to buy a four bedroom single family home in those neighborhoods. And a couple more in the outer sunset. So we had one in the inner sunset, one in the central sunset, and a couple in the outer sunset. Here's a couple in Parkside, Sherwood Forest, probably the nicest neighborhood that we've looked at in our search so far. But again, it's just one. But the number one most undervalued neighborhood right now for four bedrooms, I actually made a TikTok of the history of the sunset if you wanna go check that out. If you just go on TikTok and type in sunset, San Francisco history, it's the first one, or you can just check my profile. And here are the Sunset neighborhoods, Outer Sunset, Central Sunset, and the Inner Sunset. And similar to the Richmond, it's a love-hate. Folks that live here love it. They absolutely have to be here and they would, there's nowhere else that they'd rather live. And a lot of people just don't like it. They just don't wanna be here. They would never buy a place. Too foggy, too far away. There's no freeway access really out here. But just like the Richmond, that is a perk. People love that about the Sunset. It is very neighborhoody. And just like the Richmond, it does feel like its own city within the state of San Francisco. I appreciate you watching all the way until the end. My name is Eric Thram. I'm a realtor here in San Francisco. Leave a comment below if I left your neighborhood out. I'd love to know which neighborhoods you think are undervalued right now. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you'll be the first one to know when I post new videos about San Francisco. A little more about me. I help folks just like you every single day buy and sell their homes in San Francisco. I have a team comprised of local experts throughout the entire nine county Bay Area. And just like me, they work, live, play, and own their own homes in the areas that they serve. If you'd like to connect with me directly, check the description below. It's got all my contact information. You can call me, text me, email me. You can set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation via Zoom by clicking on my calendar link. I look forward to hearing from you. And until then, I will see you around the Bay.